no wrong from right. Did they just list me as host and not list you, Ray? I, I thought I saw. I did. Maybe this is an old version of the credits. <laughs> Good morning, folks, and welcome to the Atheist Experience. Uh, our regular viewers might notice that's a different number. What the pro uh, we got bumped here is the fifth Sunday of the month, and we're in the mini studio, so we actually have a different telephone number, and we're only going to be 60 minutes today. Yeah. Sorry about that. We're uh, lucky to be on the air at all. So yes. Thank you, lucky stars. So this is August 29th. Um. Yep. It's just wanted to verify that. We are live August 29th, and we'll be taking your phone calls here shortly. As always, we start off with announcements of Atheist Community of Austin. We meet every Sunday at the Hot Jumble Bakery. As soon as we're done here, we head right down there. That's at West 5th and Lavaca, and that's free and open to the public. And we always like meeting the new atheists in town and uh, old atheists, too. And <laughs> uh, I've been uh, reminding all of our viewers uh, and regular members there that Steven Weinberg will be our speaker at next month's uh, speaker series, and that's at FERS at North Cross Mall. Uh, this guy is a uh, author and UT pr professor, and from my understanding, puts on quite an interesting uh, discussion there, and we're definitely looking forward to meeting him. Unfortunately, he won't be able to make the show, so if you want to see him, you're going to have to come down there and meet him in person. And I'm thinking that's about it for my announcements. Okay. I'll pass it over to Jeff D. here. He, he's brought a couple of news articles. Yeah, I got a little news today. Um, there's a thing going on in Ohio with a voucher program. A federal judge in Ohio has reversed his own ruling that blocked a school voucher program to help students from poor families attend religious or private schools. The U.S. District Judge Solomon Oliver Jr. was heavily criticized for his original decision Tuesday to suspend the four-year-old program until a trial determines its constitutionality. The program pays parents up to $2,500 to put their children into private rather than public schools. But on Friday, Oliver decreed that students who participated in the Cleveland Elementary School program last year may receive vouchers for one semester or until a final judgment in the case is rendered. He also set a December 13 trial date. Critics of the program, the only one of its kind in Ohio, say it violates constitutionally protected boundaries between church and state by providing public funds to largely religious schools. People for the American Way a Washington, D.C.-based civil liberties union, along with several other national and local organizations, filed the original lawsuit that challenged the voucher program. Most of the 56 schools that participate in the program are religious schools. Catholic schools alone account, account for 2,400 of 4,000 students attending kindergarten through sixth grade. Oliver said Tuesday, the program appears to have the primary effect of advancing religion. Allowing it to continue, he said, would cause an even greater harm to the children by setting them up for a greater disruption at a later time. <laughs> the phone is ringing Go right ahead. here in the studio. Is, this, is that right? Uh, that's the first time that's ever happened. Sorry. <laughs> I was totally unprepared. <laughs> wow. We're, we're glad you're calling, though. Go right ahead. The call screeners will take care of you, and we're going to continue with the news there. Go right uh, ahead. Parents, and, uh, parents <laughs> and government and private school officials condemned the ruling immediately. Well, of course they did. What possible harm could result from allowing these uh, children to attend school where they've been enrolled pending the resolution of this court case? Repub Republican government Bob Taft asked. Well, nothing much other than that the Constitution is being violated. Oliver agreed with Taft on Friday, but said no new students would be allowed to enter the program until the issue has been resolved. That is really disruptive. <laughs> Sorry, Last God. year, the U.S. Supreme Court let stand a Wisconsin uh, Supreme Court ruling that uh, approved a similar program Milwaukee enacted in 1990. Florida's program, which began this year, has also been challenged in court. Yes, and uh, I, I'm, I hope they finally realize wh what... Uh, what the Go in there, it, it amazes uh, me. Go, I, I, oh, yeah. I, I looked, I didn't see a switch or anything to turn that off. It, uh, we're, in a, we're getting a problem solved. There it is. Um, what Thank amazes me is that <laughs> for 200 years, it was there this was. is the way it was. If you wanted to go to a private school, you had to pay, right? And at your private school, that private school could teach your kids whatever the heck you wanted to teach them. Um, and it's only recently that these, that these religious people have started insisting that uh, everybody's tax dollars have to go to help subsidize them uh, educating their children in religion. 
I, I don't. I just don't understand. Pastor calls Pokemon poison. Uh, this is a, an old story. It's uh, from August 14, but uh, it was amusing, so I thought we'd do it. Plus, it it uh, works into our topic today. Colorado Springs, a minister used a blowtorch and a sword during a church service this week to drive home his belief that Pokemon games and toys are only sugar-coated instruments of occult and evil. At a church service Wednesday at Grace Fellowship Church, pa uh, children's pastor Mark Juvera told 85 children aged 12 through, uh, 6 through 12 that Pokemon is evil. To make his point, Juvera po burned Pokemon trading cards and, uh, with a blowtorch and struck a plastic Pokemon action figure with a 30-inch sword. Juvera's nine-year-old son then tore the limbs and head off a Pokemon doll. During the demonstration, the children chanted, Burn it, burn it, and chop it up, chop it up. Pokemon... Uh, is short for Pokey po Pocket Monsters. The pop culture phenomenon began in Japan as a cartridge for Nintendo Game Boy and Nintendo uh, 64 and quickly spread to America. Its popularity fueled the debut of the Pokemon animated television series. Hasbro has a line of toys and merchandise for kid collectors and a third company, Wizards of the Coast, based in Seattle, sells Pokemon trading cards. This fall, a Pokemon movie will hit uh, the, uh, theaters across the country. At Grace Fellowship Church, pastors learned of the occult angle after reading an email of an internet essay <laughs> written by a California woman. The essay says Pokemon encourages role-playing and elevates children over God to the position of master and that the games and toys are laced with dark references. Mark Cowart, pastor of the 1,500-member non-denominational church, said the essay confirmed his suspicions about Pokemon. While driving with his kids, he heard them in the backseat talking about Abra and Kadabra. And my antenna went up, Cowart said. Cowart said one of his concerns is that uh, one of the Pokemon characters sprouts horns. Another concern, he said, is that children exploring a Pokemon website can, can click to other games, including Magic the Gathering, a game similar to Dungeons and Dragons. It's got sugar coating on it, but underneath it's poison, Cowart said. Cowart said the church used the sword and blowtorch to get its message across to kids because, quote, we live in a sight and sound generation. A little church is complete com competing against Hollywood with multi-billion dollar budgets. He said kids, kids are used to visual... Uh, uh, kids are used to visual messages, and if you hear them, uh, give them a linear message, they'll be bored. Cowart said the sword was used in the demonstration because the Bible says that, quote, the way you come down against the powers of darkness is with the sword of the spirit. We don't do things just for the sake of being sensational, like the World Federation of Wrestling. <laughs> I'm uh, surprised that he would say that after just getting through complaining that his little church doesn't have the budget that Hollywood has. Obviously, if he did, he'd be applying that to get his uh, sensationalistic message across. Now, folks, here well, is a Pokemon toy. This is what this guy is saying is an instrument of the devil. Okay? Woohoo! So scary. It's just it's just fluffy and cuddly and happy. Yes. The bottom. Of it. The bot. What do you mean? Do you want to see? <laughs> Somebody in this video has to see its bottom. There's nothing going on down there. Nothing to disturb the minds of little children. Uh, it's a, it's, it's the, a, the Japanese equivalent of a teddy bear, folks. Well, that, uh, like you said, that helps bring us into today's topic here. Uh, when people uh, hear that you're an atheist, and I've had this tell me, this, they think automatically that you're boring, that you don't have no imagination, no creativity, or whatever else. Wanted to let you folks know how creative atheists can be. Jeff D. has developed a game here called War Chest. And has wizards and warlocks and everything else. Yeah, bef before we go into that, oh, gonna, okay. uh, they, they mentioned Dungeons and Dragons in that sure. article. And first of all, Pokemon is nothing like Dungeons and Dragons. True. I should know, I used to work Good at point. TSR Hobbies back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. That's the company that makes Dungeons and Dragons. And I was around there when the whole flack about Dungeons and Dragons being satanic uh, hit the news. And it's absolute nonsense. It's a game. It's a game where kids do happen to be playing with 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 uh, you know figures that are that are uh, sword wielding heroes and wizards and priests and uh, they fight monsters and there's all this stuff going on but it's imaginary and as long as people understand that there's no problem uh, there are 
there is maybe an issue, you know, a serious issue regarding whether kids playing this stuff really understand that it's just imaginary. But if that's the issue, then that's the issue. Saying that it's bad because it's satanic completely misses the point. Uh, and uh, Magic the Gathering, which was also mentioned in that article, um, mm -hmm. that's from a company called w Wizards of the Coast that recently bought TSR Hobbies. So they're now the guys also making Dungeons and Dragons. And Magic the Gathering is nothing like in Dungeons and Dragons, except that it also has fantasy themes. What amazes me is that these, uh, these people are, uh, are all bent out of shape about, about role-playing games and card games that happen to have fantastical elements in them. But I never hear them coming out against, say, J.R.R. Tolkien saying Lord of the Rings or other fantasy novels are evil. And it's exactly the same thing. It's entertainment that happens to have fantastical elements. And th that's no more of a problem than it is for, for, you know, when you have a science fiction movie that has science fiction elements in it. As long as people understand that, you know, the technology portrayed in the science fiction film isn't real and the magic portrayed in the magic film is not real, what's the problem? Um, so, so that's that's just weird. Do you want to take calls before we do the, go no, into the game thing, or do you want to do this first? Well, why the lights are on? Our problem. That's the problem. Oh, we don't have calls. We're going to have to go off air shortly to fix the problem for a short time, and then we'll come back on the air. That's part of the problem. Okay. All right. Uh, so you want to do this first, and then yes. Uh, so we'll continue here on. Like I said, uh, this is a game that Jeff D developed himself, and uh, he would. We were talking about it earlier before we, we went on the air. That? And, and it's quite interesting. I start the game because we're about to go. Talk about we're going to take that break? Let's, let's do that. Well, no, you just talk around it. We're going to ease We don't know exactly when he's going to fix it, but he's going to mess up your thing. Here. Something's happening. Uh, we're, that's we're fixing a, we're fixing a well, we can We can do it. Uh, we, can, we can come talk right around something else when we come back to finish go into the game. All right. Um, well, so anyway, the... Yeah, you were saying you worked at uh, uh, the company that did, that did Dungeons & Dragons. Right. Uh, so I, th I found that quite interesting. I didn't know that until uh, the day. Uh, how long ago was that again? Oh, gosh. Uh, 79, I think, is when I started. So 79 to, to 81. Or can I ask you about. what you did there? I was an artist. Oh, cool. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I had already written a superhero role-playing game called Villains and Vigilantes that was published before I started working at TSR as an artist. But I've always done art and game design. The, and see, so and you have no problem at all uh, stretching the imagination to get out, you know, and not and without ever confusing it with reality or anything else like no. that. No, uh, um, and but though though again, I recognize there may be an issue that 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 you know people ought to think about, and that's um, you know it, when you when you have any kind of entertainment, there's the risk that some people might take it too seriously. Uh, there's there, this interesting thing happened while I, when I was working at TSR. I was sitting there at my art table one day, and the public relations lady came through with this uh, this farmer fellow and these two weird little children in tow. And uh, she interrupted me in my work and asked, started asking me about my educational background. And I told her the truth. The truth was that I graduated high school in three years, went into art school that was a, uh, an art school that was a three-year program, and I left after uh, two years of that because I got a job here. And she gave me this, this mean look and walked off. And I found out later that what was going on is these two little children had become so obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons that they were pl playing that uh, at the exclusion of their schoolwork. And they were expecting you know, us professionals to all uh, you know, give this party line message of education is so important. Well, I would have given the, uh, the, the party line message of education is so important. I believe that. But Boy, I, I have no idea whether anybody's hearing what I'm saying. It's kind of disturbing. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, you know, I would have I would have said that had anybody warned me about this. You know, so instead, I you know, I fear I came across giving these little kids the impression that education was something you could live without. Go phones. We understand that we have phones now. Did we did we Thanks. lose audio for a while? We no. didn't. Awesome. Thanks, dude. Um, and uh, you know, the, so there's a real there is there, there may be Appreciate a real issue, but it has nothing to do with whether the game is satanic or not. The same thing would apply if the game was you know anything. If people get obsessed with something, that can be a problem. You can go uh, to the board game. Uh -huh. um, okay. Well, it, uh, 
So, uh, well, I've, I've also, I, I have a, uh, a fantasy role-playing game of my own that I published electronically on the internet called Quicksilver. And as far as I know, it's the only game out there right now that has a disclaimer on it saying this is for entertainment purposes only and not intended to foster a belief in the occult. Uh, and I think it's worth saying just to remind people this is, this is fantasy. It's entertainment. It has nothing to do with reality. Uh, so, How anyway. Do you know, well, never mind. I was going to ask about how many lawsuits uh, they, that's been involved in Dungeons and Dragons. As far as I know, there have been no lawsuits. I thought, uh, there was a book written by a guy who partially investigated the disappearance of this kid who was supposed to have uh, disappeared while playing Dungeons and Dragons. And um, he did very, very shoddy research. My wife, uh, when I, while I was dating her, was going to Michigan State University, which is where this kid was a student. And there were people still there while she was going to that school who knew him and gave her the real inside story. The fact is, the kid was an outcast. He was not allowed into the groups that played Dungeons and Dragons because <laughs> he was such a weirdo. Um, and uh, he, in fact, ran away because he was gay and having personal problems. And, and it had nothing at all to do with Dungeons and Dragons. But that was the start of the whole the whole you know anti D and D craze. If you don't mind? Let's try the phones just to see if right, it works. Sure. And uh, but I do want to get yeah, more into we the can do that. Uh, Weaver. Hey, Weaver. Hello. Good morning. How you doing? Hello. Can you hear me? I don't think he can hear us. Hello. Weaver? Hello. Yeah. We're, okay. We. Hang on. We'll fix the phones. I'm gonna put you back on hold. I'm, I'm putting him back on hold. The right. Caller's not hearing us. You wanna do the game? Sure. Uh, this is my newest game. Um, it's called. Do we have a camera on this now? Yeah. He's working on getting a shot of it there. Can we switch to camera? Switch to camera two, please. There we go. The game is called War Chest. It's a customizable miniatures game, and uh, and it's played on a chessboard. It's basically if you if you uh, imagine what chess would be like if each piece had a point cost, and instead of the standard setup, each time you could put out any mix of chess pieces you wanted, as long as their points added up to the, to the right total, uh, uh, you could. Except that it's also not limited to the number of pieces that you have in chess. There are, there are starter sets like this, four different ones. There he's dying. The camera's not on me. There we go. Uh, there, are, there are starter sets like this, four different ones, and each of them gives you six different um, uh, six different uh, figures. figures, and you uh, you can put together any mix of figures you want out of the entire line of 86 of them. Each figure comes with a little slip of paper that describes its abilities in the game. They look like this, all right, just a little thing. There we go. And you play the game, and there there there's just one page of rules that explains what the basic rules are, and. Uh, you play against another player and you move the pieces and use whatever special abilities that they have to try to capture the other player's war chest. And that's what it's about. The, you can also get the figures individually in these little packs. You can get that one. There's a little and guy the, in there. And, these and ones he that, comes with his, oh. with his slip of paper that describes his game abilities in that. And the ones that we're showing here on the board are actually ones that you've painted. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, miniatures gaming is already an existing hobby and people like to paint their little fantasy figures, so this is a bunch that I've painted. Now here's an unpainted one for comparison to, there's two wizards in the front row there. So anyway, that's what it is. And uh, it just premiered at a big gaming convention called Gen Con in Lake Yeah, you Lake were Wisconsin. gone. The, I was the gone that one week uh, doing this, and it's, uh, it's doing really well. well uh, let's try the phone calls again. Weaver? I believe in miracles! Thank you, Tom. Remember the sexy thing. Ha! <laughs> Thanks, Weaver. Uh, always nice to start off with a compliment like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, from an idiot, but it, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, but one of the things that I enjoyed about making this game is I had the the flexibility to make up my own uh, fantasy world. Right. You know, then make, I could create my own cultures and fantasy creatures and things for this game. And one of the cultures that I came up with are these guys who are sort of medieval fantasy humanists. Um, in, in their context, in their world, there really are gods. There are these powerful supernatural entities that, 
that demand worship. So they don't deny the existence of gods. They can't really be atheists. That would be dumb for them because it's so <laughs> darn, darn obvious that these things exist. But, uh, but they don't believe that those things deserve to be worshipped. They have a sort of a philosophical order that is their religion uh, that uh, is based on the concept that might does not make right. And so these, these supernatural beings that come down and say, you know, you must worship me, they think the correct response is, well, why? That's a, so. um, but you also incorporated a lot of um, what would be considered a generic uh, medieval uh, scenarios, like you were talking about the, the squire and the knight moving together. Yeah, uh, that, that there goes back to medieval history. There are uh, actual events. Right. Well, yeah, sure. I wanted to do th things that were thematically recognizable. And in Th fact, that's in fact, was... these, this, this culture, the Heikovarans, that have, that have their, their religion called Gormanism, that's the humanist religion, um, they're actually a desert race that, uh, that are now engaging in a crusade to spread their religion throughout the world. I haven't sugarcoated this humanism. I mean, I, I recognize that, that groups with a belief system can get out of hand, and they have. They have knights, and they go into other countries, and they tell them, you know, we're going to liberate you from these gods that you are serving. And they engage in wars to essentially take over those nations um, and, and, and relieve the individuals in those nations of the right to decide for themselves what they want to believe and who they want to worship. And... Uh, you know, so you know, I, uh, yeah, I'm incorporating, I'm incorporating themes that people will recognize, and I'm, I'm hearing, yeah, I'm hearing I'm a lot hearing of noise in the control booth too, and lights are going on and off and stuff. So yeah, it, uh, they're having so much trouble. Uh, so it, it's been a strange morning, folks. Uh, if this is August 29th. We are live, and we're not in our normal studio, so bear with us. But please. Keep trying to call. Yeah. We'll, we'll work out the bugs here. But uh, there's there's dwarves and goblins and Amazon warriors and undead skeletons and all that stuff that you'd expect to find in your. Oh, well, he's like leading up to though. Uh, I was getting asked though because uh, I'd asked before the show. You, you seen there's no not dice involved, but you got hit points and protection. Or is that what? Yeah. So well, each each okay. Every figure. Do we want to go into this much detail? Every figure has an attack value, a defense value, and a movement value. Movement is how many movement points they get each time you use them. And it costs a movement point to move forward a square or to turn left or right 90 degrees. Um, if they move into another figure, they inflict the amount of damage points equal to their attack value on that other figure. And if that's enough to reduce the other figure's defense value to zero, the, that figure is removed from the board. But uh, if it's but not enough, then that figure, then the, the target figure still has points left. And so they don't take the square. They still say it. They would just bounce back and say, "Well, I can't. I can't get in there. I bounce back to where I attacked from, and then it goes on to the next turn." Well, they say that that's one of their actions. They attack that person, right? Take the hit points, and that action's done. Then, right. right. And then yeah. if that other figure wants to attack back, it can. You can right. trade blows like I that see. until somebody until somebody falls. But there's all kinds of special abilities. There's healers, and there's guys that fling lightning bolts, and um, there's an enchantress who d d does mind control. <laughs> and there's, like you were saying, the squires that have a special ability that every time you move a knight, you get to move a squire for free. Um, there's this this figure. There, there are extra big figures. Can we get a, another close-up? There's extra big figures you can buy that are more expensive but also more powerful in the game, like this wyvern. Sort of a dragony kind of thing. There we go. And the wyvern flies. It, it can uh, pass through a square containing an enemy piece without having to stop and attack it if it doesn't want to. Which can be really useful, since the game is essentially capture the flag. If you can get past the other guy's defenses by flying right over over them, that could be pretty powerful. All right, uh, I guess we're gonna try the phones again, Jeff. All right, and uh, Tim. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey good Tim. morning. Explain to us why the world is still here. Why the world is here, huh? What turn that down a little bit, would you, Howard? That speaker right there. Turn that down just a little. Okay, go ahead, Tim. Yes, uh, it's a good question, Jeff. In the comment. Yeah, yeah. Did, wasn't that uh? Nostradamus predicting the end of the earth here? No, not at all. What was he predicting here with that comment then? Nostradamus has predictions going thousands of more years. <laughs> the end of the world, what he has on the comet's the king of terror. This comet's going to foretell uh, war is going to start as soon as this goes by in September. Oh, I see. Okay, you're pushing it back to September. So right at... Uh, I had it, it at September all the time. After September, there's going to be a war. Big I, war. I guarantee you that's true. How far yeah. after September? Pretty soon after September. I mean, pretty soon. How soon is pretty soon, Tim? What says, day? This says there'll be uh, wars before and after, actually. Well, I mean, duh, there's wars before and after any point in time. Right. 
All right, so but, what does that mean? Uh, but, all right. It doesn't predict, it doesn't ever say anything about the end of the world. Okay. okay, Tim, but you called in with a question. I'm sorry, Tim, we're giving you a hard time. I was just uh, interested in your game there. It looks pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm Jeff did a great job. Oh, I, I get to announce later. this, I understand. Um, uh, I'm going to be running demos of this game at Dragon's Lair Hobby Shop on uh, next Tuesday, the 31st, at 7 p.m., and also at King's Hobby on uh, uh, September 4th from 10 to 4. Since nobody's calling, set them up and I'll play you real quick. <laughs> we do no, have other calls. No, we just have a problem. That'll be our whole show. <laughs> it, uh, now, what I did want to ask y'all about was, um, have y'all sure. ever read Sitchin? I got into Sitchin here recently. Sitchin? Zachariah Sitchin. Oh, y'all need to read that real good. It's uh, about the first civilization, Sumerians. All right. All about, all about that. Uh, I've, I've read some. I, I haven't read that particular author, but I have read a lot of history about that. He's real famous. He's like a Hebrew guy that almost rejects, you know, basic religion. Mm -hmm. But the Sumerian text, I mean, almost, you know, the original, the first people to have written tablets, like thousands of them, and he goes and deciphers them. All right. And they corroborate the Bible almost exactly. Uh, well, no, I think stuff. it backwards. When the Bible came afterwards, so wouldn't the Bible be corroborating them? It very well may be, yeah. The Sumerian text is has a creation story very similar to Garden we, of Eden. We've said that all along, that the, that the Bible is just a rehash of old stories and myths from other religions and cultures. Right, well Moses wrote down the first five books, and he got that from the Egyptians, he got that from the Sumerians. No, right. the, there's a lot of biblical scholars that will disagree with Moses. Was the, so, uh, uh, of course we're curious where you're going with this. Are you suggesting that, that uh, the older story is the truer it is? Are you suggesting the Sumerians were right and that proves that the Bible is right? Well, they had their own, each one had their own slant. Uh -huh. uh, the Sumerians had their slant, which is, I mean, it's a much longer version of the, all the stories of the Bible. I mean, if you want to go into detail about the flood and all the other stuff, the Sumerians, are, you know, they, they were obviously aware that there were nine planets in the solar system way back because they called Earth the third, or the, the seventh planet. And they called only, Earth the seventh planet. And if you're coming from outside in, it would be the seventh planet. <laughs> so uh, that, that's that, pretty amazing that 5,000 year old culture would even be aware of that. I think that that could be attributed to easily to misinterpretation and all kinds of. I, uh, since I I wasn't there, uh, since I wasn't the one doing the interpretation or reading that, uh, I would have to. There's so many possibilities to that to where they came up with Earth being the seventh planet. Uh, I would not automatically jump to that same conclusion is all, all I'm trying to say. Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, it's real detailed. There's like tens of thousands of these clay tablets yeah. they found. How, in many, how much, and yeah, see, again, the, ten, the thing is, Tim, when you got ten, tens of thousands of clay tablets and they say all kinds of wacky stuff, if you sift through there for the wacky stuff that happens to be able to be interpretable as matching up with something, then of course you're going to be able to pick out these isolated instances that seem like they might be significant. Okay. If you don't also look at all the other wacky stuff that they said and see how that doesn't match up with anything, you know, in, in a way that makes sense, and look at the proportion of their good, their correct guesses to their incorrect guesses, you don't get a real sense of the fact that they were just guessing. Well, they, were, they, don't, they don't even say that they're, I mean, they got it from, Sitchin goes into this stuff, there's these group of people that, you're going to love this. Okay. There's these people called the Anunnaki that supposedly created us and explained the big jump from evolution from, you know, monkeys to humans. And, you got, I mean, this is right up your gut. How is this up our alley? Well, this almost confirms evolution. What they say is... Um, that space, that some kind of space creatures came and created us? That well, does not confirm evolution. Well, they're basically, they're not space creatures. They're what are they? basically humans. But they made us, they uh, combined their genes. And where did they come from? The twelfth planet. You'd have to get really into the twelfth. The twelfth planet. Wait a minute. The twelfth planet. See? I thought you were so, familiar with this. So Sitchin. what? Wait a minute. If Earth is the seventh planet, that would make Venus the eighth planet, Mercury the ninth planet, the tenth planet would be the Sun, and there are no eleventh or twelfth planets. Well, according to Sitchin, there is a twelfth planet. So there, there you the go. Moon, yeah. So you're interpreting. The moon as a you're just you're just taking this guy's. Uh, I don't I don't know where wh oh, don't, whether this guy's actually this saying this stuff or whether you're reading it into him. But once again, you're just taking stuff, and whenever something seems to make sense to you, you make a big deal out of it. And whenever stuff doesn't seem to make sense to you, you gloss it over. <laughs> well, and that's just not fair. That's not a rational me. way of going about figuring out what's true. No, most of it doesn't make sense to me, or it makes sense, but I don't believe it. 
but the historical okay. corroboration with the Bible is almost, you know, fact. Well, that is exactly what you would expect if one, if you know, if one group came up with a bunch of myths, and then the the, the next group inherited those myths and rewrote them, and a third group inherited those myths and rewrote them. This is exactly what you would expect. Well, the and of the none myth. of it depends on the first myths ever having been true. Well, it's not myth though. It's kings that come in succession. They, I mean, they've got them listed. <coughs> They line up exactly with the Bible, you know, Nebuchadnezzar and Hammurabi so? and all those guys. So? Well, just, I mean, y'all always say that the Bible, there's nothing to confirm the historical what? accuracy of it and stuff. Yeah, no. yeah. Have you ever read War and Peace? No, I wouldn't even try. War and Peace <laughs> mentions historical cities and historical figures, and that's all accurate. But that doesn't mean that the that the characters and the and the events in War and Peace really happened. It means that it's in a context that is based in historical accuracy. Okay. Well, well do y'all believe in the flood and stuff? No. There was not a what there there is isolated floods and we have evidence of it all over the world. But there was no world flood. Well, the historical record shows there was from every no. group in the world. No, uh, no. Every group in the world has was human beings. And human beings, primitive human beings, needed to live near uh, rivers in order to survive. Okay? They, they needed that to, to, have the, to have that resource at hand in order to survive. And rivers flood. So every human settlement yeah, or the vast majority of human settlements, I'm sure there are ex exceptions, the vast majority of human settlements <coughs> would be in situations where they would experience floods and they'd be very devastating because we're talking about human beings that get around on foot. They didn't have horses, they didn't have, they didn't have cars, they didn't have jet airplanes, they didn't have any kind of disaster relief. If there was a flood, it would, it would cover the entire world as far as they could tell. And that's the explanation for all these cultures saying that there were floods. And there's plenty of geological evidence for isolated flooding, but there is no fossil geological evidence whatsoever for a worldwide flood. There's written, documented evidence from South America and all the Incas and all those guys. They did not, at the, they had no idea even how, how they big were, the world and was. And they were also primitive people that lived near rivers, and rivers flood. Well, there's and primitive rivers people flood. That have you ever been in a flood zone? Same thing. Tim, have you ever been in a flood zone? I've lived like, in it in my life. <laughs> we, have, we have floods here in the United States. Okay, and if you're stuck in the middle of one, you know, sitting on top of the, the tip of your house that's still sticking out, and you look around, it looks like the entire world is underwater. That's what it looks like. We're in South America and Mesopotamia at all at the same time, though, we have the same written document. The, the, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It is still <laughs> just isolated flooding, and they had no way of knowing that a flood in South America is flooding over uh, on the other side of the world. It and did not happen. By that the way, way, the Incas. The Incas and the uh, Sumerians were not contemporaries. Oh no, Sumerians are the first civilization ever. Well, and so you're completely wrong when you suggest that all these floods, all these flood reports, go to the same date. Well, the, the South American and stuff; those are oral traditions passed down. But you cannot, like he's saying, you cannot say that they all happened at the same time. Uh, these are stories that have been around thousands and thousands yeah, now, of years and have been rehashed. Now you're taking advantage of the fact that oral tradition, since there's no written record, we well, don't know how far back they go. And so you're taking advantage of, of that lack of knowledge to interpret that, well, obviously it must have been the same flood that these other guys were talking about. No, it doesn't have to have been because floods happen in isolated areas. We already know that. I thought of another question, too. When did that flood happen then, Tim? Uh, I'd have to look. It's like... Uh, Five or six thousand BC. There was a worldwide flood at oh, five thousand yeah. BC. It may be earlier than that. Okay. It. Uh, uh, there is no. There's not a single scientist out there that would back you on that statement. Yeah. There's not enough water in the I, entire planet I, to do. We that. have other callers, Tim. I have to go. Y'all read some sitchin. All right. You have a great week. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's go to you. Jim. Oh boy, this is God. <laughs> Well, You've been bad. <laughs> You've taken my name in vain. Uh, it, what do you think of those signs out there that are uh, supposedly quoting you, those billboard signs? I shall smite the man that did it. Yeah. Do you Thank play you. dice with the universe or don't you? No, sir. <laughs> you have played with God. Play All right. Do you play Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> I am the Dungeons and Dragons Master. I am okay. God. <laughs> All right, well, that's I can mean. juggle and ride a unicycle. I am God. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, thanks for calling. Anything else you'd like to tell the Austin viewers while you have... It seems like you'd pick a bigger station than the Access Channel here in Austin. <laughs> no, I picked on the atheist community because I am God. All right. Yeah. You're not going to smite us then? No smiting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You have a great week. You do. <laughs> How long? Whatever a God week happens to be. <laughs> yeah, however long that happens to be. All right. Let's go. Eric. Derek. 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 Hey, Ray. Hey, Jeff. Good um, morning. I had a quick, quick, quick comment about the flooding thing. Sure. Yeah. Um, I always, it always really kind of amuses me when uh, Christians and other religions bring up the idea of a worldwide flood. Um, and even though there isn't evidence for it anywhere, um, even if you just give them the premise, okay, sure, we'll say there was a worldwide flood, you don't even have to prove it, how does that say anything about God? Well, the, the argument is then that gives but. Uh, but and, and, and I mean, the, the idea that just because there was a worldwide flood, that that proves God did it, is just that's a good the, point. The part that I uh, that goes, gets back to what I was saying about the historical uh, details in the Bible. Right. Even given that there are accurate historical details, that does not make any of the supernatural claims true. Right. Right. I mean, just like in War and Peace, the the historical references in that do not prove that the fictional things actually happened. Right. Um, the the I think the issue would be that. Uh, since there is not enough water on the entire Earth for there to be, ever be such a flood, uh, and since you know the mountain ranges and things are just too darn tall, uh, the uh, that you know th I think it would imply the existence of a god had there been such a flood because it would have taken a god like that in order to create all this water miraculously to cover the entire Earth. And then but of course, all really carefully when it was over. <laughs> yeah, but of course. The Christians are, are trying to argue that there was enough water, that the mountains were low enough then, you know, and come up with all these cockamamie excuses yeah. to make it physically possible, which right. works against their argument. Because if it's physically possible, then it could have happened and been natural. <laughs> right. But so. they, don't, they don't ever seem to allow for that. If it, um, no. They're just kooky. According to their logic, yeah. If it did happen, and they can prove that it happened, that leads to the idea that, well, that means God did it. And that just always is kind of I funny I just noticed my, my head has been... Blocking the A and, and no, no, you're fine. There we go. <laughs> I, I pre that was an excellent point, Derek. All right, thanks. Very you much. have a great week. Thanks. All right, let's go on down to uh, Rita. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to make a comment uh, about also the flood that you're talking about. Have you ever gone to the different mountains, high high peaks of mountains, where in the scientists had actually seen the different layers of mud or or um, places in the mountains that they had actually uh, right. said that this water has been even in the Himalayas and even in right. Everest that they have all of those that that means that that water had actually reached that part no uh, no no actually, no yes, no no it could be no uh, because even in in Texas now if you go to a uh, temple you can see the different layers yeah. what the of, of mud and the thing that other uh, problem too is that the power is just a god the, that God is powerful. He can do anything. No, it, and as, as, as an atheist, probably because you don't believe in a God that is powerful, there is a God that is powerful. I also want to know, do you believe in what is good and what is evil? And, uh, that is a definite... How would you define good or evil? Is, uh, do you believe in them that there's a good and there's an evil uh, in the world? You, you can define a good and you can define an evil. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's the same definition that I have for good or evil. Uh, that is a matter of opinion. Uh, so, uh, but let me get back to your f uh, falsehood of your first statement. Just because they show fossils, uh, uh, water, uh, living, ocean living creatures on top of a mountain does not mean that there was ocean up there. It means that that it mountain was at the bottom of the ocean yeah. at no, one it time, happened. ma'am. And through plate what, technology. Look at this. When we have a flood, that water recedes, isn't it? No, yeah. that's not how it happened, ma'am. Ma no, 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 no. Except because there is evidence that the Himalayas and all Everest had actually different layers, that the water has been there before, yeah. you should. It's not only because that you don't have any proof of it. You are looking at some, uh, you believe is something that you can say, hey, I want a proof of what it is. Okay, It's not everything because We're not, not everything is, 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 uh, you can experiment on or you can see it. Yeah, Just like uh, the presence not, of a wind, the presence of a We'll cut you off here in a minute, ma'am. Please, you need uh, to let us respond. Okay. Okay. We're on a time limit. We're not arguing that, that, uh, that, you make that so water has never covered certain parts of the earth. Okay. 
Of course it has. The, what we are arguing is that there has never been a single simultaneous worldwide flood. The, the thing about those fossils you're talking about, okay, is that uh, there, there is plate tectonic movement. There, the mountain ranges get pushed up by the movement of the, of, of the crust of the earth. And things that used to be low enough to be coverable by water are not anymore. And that's the explanation for why those things are there why those fossils are there. It's not that the water ever reached high enough that it covered up the mountains. You understand? No. No, okay. Uh, the other <laughs> thing too I would like to know about, about what, is, uh, what is the goal of FAS in your community? What do you believe in then? If you don't, have, you don't believe in a God, what is, we, what is the, base, uh, what's the basis of your existence? We believe through the enlightenment, enlightenment and education that people will come to realize wh wh you know, what the human potential really is. And we don't need any religious uh, baggage to reach that potential. And uh, our, my personal beliefs are that the religion has actually uh, caused so much trouble and is, and is bogging down the human condition that we need to get rid of it completely. But if you want to, if you want to pray to your God in your house, that's more, more power to you. Do whatever you want. But I don't want it in my government. I don't want it in my schools. I don't want it out there in the public. Didn't you know that religion should realize that the world, the human race, is a community in itself? And if you only want what you want, it's not going to be a community. No, we don't. We, no. Okay. Uh, but, what, what but, but wait about? a minute. There's a community this, there, ma'am. Wait a minute. Want you want to eliminate Our turn again, please. And you, can, you just want to. You know, you, you criticize Christianity in its belief. Yeah. Right. You know, you talk about this Christianity in, in its belief. Yeah. Right. You know that the God that we believe is a good God, is a peaceful God. Really? It's a loving God. And really? It's the basis of everything. Oh, yes, really? And a, a God that is just. Okay. Do you okay. believe in justice in a God that knows and is powerful? I have a that, I have a, a something I'd like to read to you, ma'am. God. I'd like I, I have something I'd like to read to you, if you don't mind. Okay. Hang um, on, ma'am. This is from the Bible, a list of all of the people that said to have been either directly killed by God or killed by God's followers at God's orders. Okay. Passed it. Did I pass it? You know, it? You, you, you're telling me I, about that in the Bible, about, I told you there is, uh, this is a just God. How is... There is a purpose for that, for that just God. Okay. Just like the evil no. in the world. That's what I saw. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, hang on a second. I'm still trying to find it. I got a lot of notes in here. Oh, maybe I don't have it with me. You know, so, just like the basis of our government. If you check in your Bible, what you'll find... Yeah, wait, find it. In the, the Bible, there are millions and millions of people. And laws that All right, we need that's, to follow. that's kind of where to go. We got a bunch of other colors, ma'am. Oh, I, well, I appreciate your input. If you check your Bible, I, you'll find that there are millions and millions and millions of people that, uh, that the Bible says were either killed directly by God or, uh, or on God's orders. And you'll also find that, a, that the only people that Satan is said to have killed, according to your own Bible, are uh, uh, somebody's family, and that's only because the Bible says God told him he could go ahead and do that. Okay, so don't tell us you've got a just loving God, because you, I mean you you may believe now that that's what that God is, but you're continuing a tradition that uh, that goes all the way back to ancient people who believed a completely different set of things about their God. They thought their god was this omnipotent warrior who would kick the butts of anybody who got in their way. And that that was okay, because, you know, we're us. We want our, the, our enemies to have their butts kicked. And that, that's, that's, I'm sorry, that's not just or loving. That's just, that's just muscle-headed. All right, let's go down. Uh, Omega? Hello? Did I pronounce your name correctly? Omega. Omega. Yeah, like the watch. Okay. It's really my name, so don't laugh. No, no, I was, I was, uh, they spelled it wrong on the, my floor manager spelled it wrong. That's the reason I pronounced it wrong. No. Well, he started laughing. I didn't know if it was my name or what. So it's like, but that's a cool name. It's not a joke. It's not a handle, okay? Okay, okay. it's a cool name. Uh, okay, thanks, thanks for calling. Well, um, anyway, I don't really have a question or anything. Sure. I just wanted to say that um, I was glad to see your show. Thank you. And that um, some of the stuff that you guys said, I was like, yes. I'm so glad to finally see, especially on cable access where we have a lot of those 
you know, religious shows. Yeah. That you try to get past really quick. <laughs> yes, we're definitely outnumbered on the <laughs> the religious shows to the atheist shows are definitely outnumbered. Right, and I was just really glad to see that, and I thought you guys were doing real well. I just wanted to. Well, you know, thank, thank you. you. And some of the points you made, I mean, it's really good. It's really good points. We'd like to invite you on down to the bagel shop. Once we're done here, we go down to the Hot Jumble Bagelry, and that's Atheist Community of Austin meets down there every Sunday. Oh, really? It's like West 5th and Lavaca. Okay. And we'd love to meet you in person. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, you have well, a great week. It's always nice to hear other atheists out there, yes. I'm not sure she was, right? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> yes, I, I made that assumption. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. You, I, you assume anybody who's nice to us is an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> Mike? Yeah, how you doing? Real good. Hi, Mike. Hey, uh, you know, I've only called a, uh, these shows up twice in my life. I called you guys once about two weeks ago, and then I uh, have called, a, you know, another show one time. And I always got cut off before I, you know, had a chance to get my point across. But I'm really, you know, I'm calling right now just to, uh, you know, not really to, uh, you know, argue with you or anything like that. I just want to give you some, you know, like maybe points to contemplate or whatever sure. to think about. Um, you know, it says in the Bible, like, you know, at the end times, you know, uh, man will gain knowledge, but he will not survive. And another thing, it says, it, don't you think it's a little bit funny, you know, that, of course, we use Christian time, you know, the, the, our year system and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the, the last century before the year 2000, all of a sudden we have planes and uh, rockets and, uh, you know, we fly to the moon and we have television and computers and, you know, just like a hundred years before, um, you know, the uh, year 2000. I'm not saying that, you know, the world's going to end in 2000 for sure. I'm just, you know, making a point here or trying to make a little bit of a point. And it also says uh, here lately on, there's been a bunch of television shows out about the Bible Code. Have you all heard about the Bible Code? Yes. Yeah, we're familiar with the Bible Code. Okay. That's such a joke. Okay. Because you well, can take any, it's been shown, and there's several websites that yeah, are actually. War, War and Peace, again, has been run through the same, <laughs> okay. uh, the same uh, techniques that they use to analyze the Bible, with yeah. the Bible Code. And you can find hidden messages in War and Peace. So okay. either that means that, that those messages are all valid, or it means that none of them are valid. And they also uh, shown that uh, uh, one uh, author there went through and the Bible code itself pulled up a verse there that said the Bible code is a fake. So, you know, using the exact yeah, same... Yeah, Drosnan, big liar. Yeah. Okay. Michael Drosnan is the guy that, uh, that came up with the Bible code. About. You can find that phrase in the Bible, Drosnan, big liar. So what does that okay, mean? another thing to think about is, this, is all that stuff is in the Bible, too. I'll, I'll say that in a minute. But also, you know, I didn't want to make another point, is people believe, you know, won't believe things unless there's proof. Now, you know right now in front of you, there's, you know, television waves going in front of you that you can't see. They're in the room with you. You can't see them. You can't touch them. The air's there. You can't see the air. You can't touch the air. There's radio waves that are going through the air. You can't see them, but you know that they're there. Yep. Now, because we have the machines. Bible, it says that, you know, man, like I said, man will gain knowledge, but they will not survive. You know, that means that people, God tells you that he's not going to give you a sign. And he says that, you know, people, he expected people to be questioning them, you know, questioning him. And he expected people, you know, to be wanting proof and wanting proof. But he said in the Bible that he's not going to give you any proof. Oh, well, you're, you're supposed to believe the, the by time faith. to believe something is after there's been proof. If we went back a few hundred years and you walked up to somebody and said, there's these invisible things in the air called radio waves. They wouldn't believe you. They wouldn't believe you. And it would be entirely appropriate for them not to believe you because lacking any proof, that, yeah. that, that that claim was true, and remember, it would be, be nonsensical for them to just so believe you. Why. And the same thing applies now to your claims of a God. If there are supernatural things going on, the time to believe those things is after the proof is in. Because you can make claims about anything, but only a very tiny subset of all the claims you could possibly make will turn out to actually be true. When the evidence like is in, in Bible, that is dude, the time to believe. Dude, it says in the Bible that you know people will be looking for proof, but there will be none. Well, that's, that's exactly, exactly what, what you would what expect God somebody, saying, some people with a belief system that was based on no evidence to say. I mean, man will gain knowledge. You can gain as much knowledge as God wants you to believe in him through faith, not by proof. 
you know, that's, <laughs> that's the big thing. All right, that, know, I, hey, dude, also, if you if, don't believe in, in tongues and stuff like that, and also that flood thing, what it says, you know, in the Bible, it rains for 40 days and 40 nights. Right. That's where the rain, you know, that's where the water came from. And Satan is so sly that he will try to lead people astray. Yeah. No matter, you know, he'll give you proof. He'll make it, Satan's not going to come up and be, you know, an evil, uh, you know, wicked person. He's going to be okay. so no, We don't believe in Satan either, sir. Lead you away uh, we don't believe in Satan either. But when you come, when you come to us can. and say, oh, you Bible, just got to believe. You dude. just got to believe because our big holy book. Is telling you all what's right. going on. All right. Now, wait a minute. We get, to, we get a turn to respond. Well, uh, I told you I wanted to give you some things to contemplate. We're, yeah. we're, we're telling you what we, we have got, contemplated those things. And we're telling you what we about them. We got a bunch of other callers. If you don't want to hear what we what we think about the things you're asking us to contemplate, well, what does that tell tell us about you? All right, let's go on down the line to Brenda. Hi. Um, yes, I have a comment, and you don't have to answer the question. Uh, I believe everybody should have their own belief. I believe what the um, man just called, he had a great uh, point there. However, what was his great point? I did not see his great point. Okay, well, my point was that I stated in the beginning, I believe that everybody has their own belief, and that's my, I respect that from everyone. Then why, uh, why okay. is the Christian right trying to force it on us? I don't believe no one is trying to force nothing on no one. Even God himself says that we have the right to believe in whatever you what, want to What is the in. motto of this country? However, my, comments, my call was that atheist groups, the Jehovah Witness, the Muslims, and all of the groups that uh, get together and come up with their own belief makes my belief as a Christian, and I hope for all other Christians, to believe in what Jesus has said. Okay. Because in his word, he said there would be false Okay, there will uh, be false documents on the earth, and that's what's going on. Oh, happen. so we he, should, we are free to believe, stressed, we, you, sir, you're, what you're saying, ma'am, is we're free wait, to I, believe whatever sir. we want, Hello? but then you're going to call us on our show and say what you believe is false. The no, fact is what you don't believe, believe that false. everybody ought to believe just what they want, because you think there are accurate beliefs and inaccurate beliefs, no. true beliefs and false beliefs. Are you saying that you really think that people ought to believe false beliefs? No, of course I think not. And neither do we. Okay, I'm So we're saying. here we're here explaining our point of view on things and you're free to explain your point of view on things. But don't pretend like it's perfectly okay with you if people believe stuff that you think is wrong. No, why I would believe why would it be okay for people to believe that stuff that believe stuff that is wrong? I believe there is only one God and I believe that the atheists, the Jehovah Witnesses, and all other are coming up okay. as believing something different. And in the Bible, I believe that every okay. knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And so that day is yet to come we want, that we are going to have to bow down to one God, all right. we, not all just right. government. Thank, okay. Thanks for calling. What the deal is, this is the <laughs> Atheist Community of Austin show. We have control of the phone box here. And the whole deal is, there's all these other religious channels out there with all these other religious shows on there. And if you want to call up and quote the Bible and tell us what the... Call them. We don't care. We don't believe in the Bible. We think it's a bunch of lies and myths and everything else. So we really don't care. We'll, we'll be happy to have a discussion with you. But we get a chance to John. talk. It's our show. Come on. John. Actually, I believe it's Brian. Oh, Brian. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, go ahead, Brian. okay. Uh, somebody was talking about... Uh, the faith and having the faith before the proof. All right. Well, for example, the faith that uh, God is a good God and you want the proof before the faith. Well, let's just take the and reverse it and put it in government. Yeah. Don't you want to have proof that the government is a good government before you have faith that the government is a good government? You think so, yeah. That was the only comment I wanted to make, John. That was a great comment, too. Thank you. Thank you. I would think you would want to have proof of anything before you have faith in it. You would, you would at least want some really serious evidence before you have absolute faith in something. Let's go on down to Linda. Hi. Good morning. Um, you know, I, I kind of, um, as far as religion goes, uh, uh, tried organized religion when I was a kid and, <clears throat> you know, was excited because uh, they told me God loved me and things like that. But as I became a devout Christian and studied and did all the thing like that, I got more guilt-ridden and found that, uh, you know, it sort of didn't work, you know. And then, so I got real disillusioned, 
Right. And, uh, but, you know, I believed in all things like the golden rule, and I really, you know, wanted peace and, and uh, oh, sure. you know, things like that. Of course. And later, later in my life, <clears throat> I, and, I, and I was an ethical person, and I, you know, was, was doing well. <clears throat> then later in life, um, <clears throat> I went through a divorce, and then uh, uh, tried a relationship again a couple of years later, and then all of a sudden I uh, lost my job, my, uh, my boss died, uh, lost the company car uh, and about $72,000 a year and then my boyfriend dumped me right at, these things happened all at once mm -hmm. so I uh, it wasn't that I was like a nut like suicide um, uh, you know it's just that I I was tired of giving my best and uh, I, I'm not being rude man but I'm down to four minutes can you please get to the point okay well then I thought I you know that I, if there was a God, I wanted to die, and I'd like to do it without suicide. And my point was <clears throat> that uh, I just, if I said, if you're not going to let me commit su I mean, if you're not going to uh, kill me or whatever like that, let me experience you if, if there is something like, you know, whatever I'd experience after death. And actually, I just, I'd never meditated, and, and I was expecting the worst, but what I felt... Um, was an experience of a unconditional love from something in the universe. You know what I mean? And I think that it has nothing to do with faith. Uh, there may be something out there. Uh, but all the rules and the <clears throat> things around the Bible, it, uh, it, it's basically uh, yeah. has been used to control man. You they, know? They, and, they have uh, reproduced very similar results in the laboratory with carbon dioxide, haven't they? And, uh, just, it, uh, well, I'd love to take it then. <laughs> That's a great the, feeling. <laughs> they've increased the that, that spiritual feeling is a thing that can that that they've narrowed down a part of the brain that generates that feeling, and you know my my only response to you, man, would be uh, th when you are feeling at your most vulnerable at uh, and and you are feeling the you know the most like you really want to experience something like something like that is the wrong time to. Uh, to have that experience and then take it real seriously. You, you see what I'm saying? Um, I understand. If you, wanna, if you want to understand what's really going on, the time to do that is when your mind is clear and not when you are distraught. Right. Well, actually, uh, all that kind of thing went away before I had this experience, but whatever I did experience back then, I felt like there was a unconditional love, non-judgment. I mean, uh, if, if this was a God experience I felt, I felt he would love a murderer just as much as he loved me or whatever like that. You know what yeah. I mean? All our rules and, and various things, it, it didn't seem to, uh, you know, make, make much difference. It's just that after that, I've never been religious, you know, since. Or, you know, it certainly didn't give me a, uh, um, well. you know, that kind of a, a... But I feel like there is something out there. And it's of a loving, intelligent type of thing. You know, I turned my life around... With, with whatever that was. Um, I think it's kind of hard to live on this planet with uh, a lot of the corruption and, <coughs> and everything that goes on. But, um, um, you know, well, I think the only way anybody could experience something that would be an individually. It, believing something doesn't make it true. You right. know what I mean? Right. Okay, that's good. Good one to end on. All right. You have a great week. Bye. Thanks for your call. <coughs> All right, we're down to less than a minute. Uh, we, we're... Normally the show is 90 minutes, but due to the scheduling problems down here with the TV station, we got into the mini studio instead of the main. We will be back next week, full 90 minutes, 9 a.m., channel 16. Do you know who the guest is going to be? No. No, no, I don't <laughs> right off the top of my head. I'm It'll sorry. be somebody cool. <laughs> and next weekend is Labor Day weekend. That's the first Sunday of the month, right? Uh, is it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, so, uh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm running demos of my game at uh, Dragon's Lair. At uh, on uh, Tuesday the 31st at 7 p.m. and at King's Hobby on uh, um, September 4th uh, from 10 to 4. So come on by and check it out. That's, uh, okay. That's it. Yeah, 10 yeah. seconds. Yeah. It's, well, we love you, Austin. We love uh, everyone out there. Come on down to the bagel shop down in West Fifth and Lavaca. Thanks for watching. We're heading down that. Way.